Aum. Prakashur kasya toyasya shaitya magner yatoshnata Svabhava satchidananda nitya nirmala tatmanaha Prakashaha, luminosity, arkasya, of the sun, toyasya, or water, shaityang, coolness, agnehe, for fire, yata, just as, ushnata, heat, svabhavaha, nature, sat, existence, reality, chit, Consciousness, Ananda, bliss, Nitya, eternity, Nirmalata, purity, Atmanaha, of Atman. Just as luminosity is the nature of the sun, coolness of water and heat of fire, so too the nature of the Atman is eternity, purity, reality, Consciousness and bliss. Namaste. So, one of our recent videos was about the relativity of consciousness. In other words, consciousness is going to change how we see things depending on what state of consciousness we're in. Similarly, when we talk about the qualities of Brahman, the qualities of the self, then we have to use relativity because the self, Brahman, is the absolute and actually has no qualities. It's actually inexplicable. We can't talk about it. And it's actually not related to anything else. But for the sake of explanation, for the sake of comprehension and description, we can superimpose qualities on Brahman in relation with the creation. This is a kind of relativity, too. So, for example, here it's said that just like the quality of the sun is illumination and the quality of water is coolness, these are also relative. The sun is illuminating relative to the darkness. Space is dark by nature. So the world is actually enveloped in darkness. The sun is there to provide light so that we can perform our different activities or so that we can see anything. <laughs> Similarly, the coolness of water is also relative to our body temperature. If you've ever been in the tropics and gone in the ocean on a hot day, it's body temperature. It feels like a bath. <laughs> There is no difference in temperature. So the coolness of the water doesn't register. See? The difference, the relativity of the two perceptions is necessary to perceive the quality. And similarly, the heat of fire is also relative to our normal body temperature. If our bodies were made of fire we wouldn't perceive any difference. So in the same way, when we talk about the qualities of Brahman, they are relative to the creation. Because there's actually no way to talk about Brahman. So we have to superimpose or overlay the qualities of the material creation so that we can say anything at all about Brahman. We have to compare it with our everyday experience. So here it is said that the nature of Brahman is eternity. 
And of course, that's different from the material creation where everything is temporary. And sometimes it's said that one attains eternity in heaven, in the, either the lower heaven or the higher heaven, but that's not exactly eternity. That, again, is only relative eternity for the duration of the material creation. But since that also has an end, it's not really eternal. Brahman is the only really eternal thing that we know of. But Brahman's eternity only shows up in relation with the material creation's temporariness. It's non-eternity. It's transience. So in a similar way, when we say that Brahman is pure, its purity is relative to the impurity of the material creation. And what do we mean by impurity? Anything which is not tending towards self-realization. In other words, passion and ignorance. Passion is the cultivation of desires and action leading to satisfying those desires, or at least trying to. <laughs> Actually, desires can never be satisfied. That's why the sadhu tries to minimize the desires. Because desires lead to suffering. This is expressed in so many ways, in so many different scriptures, even uh, not only the Vedic scriptures, also the Buddhist scriptures, and so on. You would think that people would get a clue, but they don't, because they're conditioned. Their consciousness is conditioned. So the next one, reality, is in contrast to the conditioned nature of the material creation. Brahman is completely unconditioned. So it is the absolute reality. It never changes. It's not subject to birth, continuance, and death. In fact, Brahman actually, like I said, has no qualities at all. Because what can you compare it to? The only other thing to compare it with is the material creation. <laughs> By contrast, Brahman comes out looking pretty nice, doesn't it? <laughs> and finally, consciousness and bliss. Chit-ananda. Well, when they combine is chit-ananda. And these two qualities are what sets Brahman apart from everything else, meaning the material world. That nothing material is conscious. The whole debate about AI becoming sentient is moot. It's really inappropriate because a machine made of material parts, material elements, can never become conscious by definition. And then, of course, the argument is, well, we are conscious, and we are made of material elements. But again, that's looking at the body. And, of course, the body and mind reflect the consciousness of Atman. But that consciousness is not native to them. It's a native only to Brahman. And because it reflects, just like a pot of water, a pot of water is not illuminating. It is not a source of light. Yet, if the sun or moon or an electric light or lightning is reflected in it, it appears to be a source of light. But that's just illusion. That's just conditioning. See, because it has the property of reflectivity, it can appear to be a source of light when some actual source of light is reflected in it. That's all. It's not really giving light, only reflecting it. It's only borrowed the light from some other source. 
Similarly, the body, mind, and intelligence are reflecting the consciousness and the bliss of Brahman. Ramana Maharshi talked about this. He said, we feel happy when we satisfy a desire, at least temporarily. Why is that? Because when we have a desire, we're miserable, isn't it? It's a division where it's separating ourselves into me at the present time and me in the future when I get what I want. So <laughs> there's this split, this division, this tension between the present and the future, the desired future. And this causes stress. This is suffering. So we should drop all desires. But anyway, when we have them and we satisfy them, at least to some extent, we feel happy. Why? Not because satisfying the desire made us happy, but because dropping the desire allows us to experience the natural happiness of Brahman, the self. In other words, we are naturally happy because we are Brahman. We are the self. We are Atman. And Atman is happy by nature. But when we have a desire, it's an upadi that covers our natural happiness. So when we uh, apparently satisfy a desire, that allows us to drop the desire, to let go of that tension, that suffering, that, oh, I'm craving this thing, you know. And when we do that, it permits the natural happiness of the self to shine. And so this is the actual nature of the self. Happiness, bliss, consciousness, reality, effulgence by nature. But the effulgence of the self is different from the effulgence of the sun. The effulgence of the self, it's described in the scriptures, is existence. Just like these material bodies are only reflecting the consciousness of the self, the whole material creation is only reflecting the existence potency of the self, the sat potency. And so if we want real existence, we should realize the self, which is the actuality, the source of everything. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Oh, Namah Shivai.